Want to speak real Japanese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at JapanesePod101.com. Imagine you're on a packed train in Tokyo. You want to get off but can barely move. What do you say? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Anyone can learn how to ride a train in Tokyo. In this lesson, you learn how. Ben is on his way to his friend Taichi's house. Let's watch. Dozo. Arigatou gozaimasu. Tsugiwa. Shinjuku. Shinjuku. Sumimasen. Orimasu. Now, the lesson focus. Here's how to ride a train in Japan. Pregnant women often wear a maternity badge like this when they commute by train in Japan. This badge is given to pregnant women at stations or local city offices for free. They can easily show that they are pregnant and get preferential treatment. So, when you see a woman wearing the maternity badge, you might want to offer her a seat, like Ben did in this video. Dozo. If you're ready to get off the train, but there are a lot of people between you and the door, you would say, Sumimasen, orimasu. Then other passengers will try to make space for you to get out. People standing near the door often get off for a moment and wait outside the train. On the other hand, if you are the one standing near the door of a crowded train, be sure to step onto the platform when the doors are open so the people behind you can get out. There are a few more manners you might want to know about when you get on a crowded train. The first one is to hold your backpack in front of you so you can control it more easily. The next one is to be careful of your headphone volume. You don't want to bother other people around you with the noise from your headphones. The last one is for men only. Be aware of women only cars. Some trains have women only cars during rush hours. The women only cars should have stickers like this and are usually at one end of the train. Accidentally getting on a women only car is one of the most common and embarrassing mistakes foreign men make. Imagine you're visiting your Japanese friend's house. Your friend's mother answers the door and invites you in. What should you say? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Anyone can learn how to visit someone's house in Japan. In this lesson, you learn how. Ben has arrived at his friend Taichi's house. Let's watch! Ben desu. Ben, irashai. Saa, douzo. Slipper, douzo. Arigatou gozaimasu. Ojama shimasu. Taichi, Ben kun yo. Hai. Kore, douzo. Minasan de tabete kudasai. Ara, arigatou. Now, the lesson focus. Here's how to visit someone's house in Japan. In Japan, people take their shoes off when entering a house. When you visit someone's house in Japan, make sure to take your shoes off at the entrance. Also, you might be offered indoor slippers at the entrance, just like how Taichi's mother offered Ben slippers. Slipper, dozo. These are indoor slippers. Keep in mind that there will usually be different slippers to change into when you enter a bathroom or veranda, so don't go to those places with your indoor slippers. When taking off shoes and putting on slippers, what did Ben say? This is a common phrase used when entering someone's home. This is the polite version. If you want to say it more casually, like when you visit your very close friends, you can just say, Also, when you are invited to someone's house, you might want to bring a small gift. Usually, it would be something to eat, such as sweets or fruits, and the price range would be around 3,000 yen. This would vary depending on your age or the situation. When you hand it to your host, you say, Kore, dozo. Make sure to hold it with both hands. If it's in a paper bag, it's polite to take it out of the bag and then give it to them. 
Imagine you've been eating dinner at your Japanese friend's home. How can you use polite table manners? こんにちは、リサです。リサ here. Anyone can learn how to politely eat a meal in Japan. In this lesson, you learn how. Ben is sitting at the dining table with Taichi and his mother. Let's watch. さあ、どうぞ、食べて。いただきます,いただきます味噌汁美味しいですよかったベン君ご飯茶碗を持って食べてねあ、はい Now the lesson focus Here's how to politely eat the meal in Japan A typical Japanese meal at home consists of rice, miso soup, a main dish, and side dishes. It is typically laid out with a rice bowl placed by your left hand and the soup bowl placed by your right hand. There's a Japanese word for a set of rice, miso soup, and three dishes. Traditionally, it's said that this kind of set is a well balanced meal. Do you know what order you should eat these things in? The traditionally polite way of eating is not to keep eating one thing until you finish it. Instead, you should try to move from dish to dish, only eating one bite of each before alternating. The goal is to generally eat everything at the same pace. Many people don't know that it's good manners to hold the bowl when you eat rice or miso soup. Put your thumb on the edge of a bowl and use the other fingers under the bottom to hold it. Leaving the bowl on the table and hunching over when you eat rice is not good manners in Japan. Also, you shouldn't put your mouth on the bowl and shovel rice into your mouth. However, when you have miso soup, you can put your mouth on the bowl and sip soup directly without using a spoon. Imagine you're eating dinner with your Japanese friend's family. You remember hearing about good and bad chopstick manners, but forget which is which. What should you do? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Anyone can learn how to use chopsticks properly. In this lesson, you learn how. Ben is eating dinner at his friend Taichi's home. Let's watch. Ben はお箸が上手ですね。ありがとうございます。この箸置き、きれいですね。ありがとう。Taichi, だめ。それは寄せ箸。悪いマナーですよ。Now, the lesson focus. Here's how to use chopsticks properly. This is the proper way to hold chopsticks. Let's see how to do this step by step. Step 1. Put the first chopstick on the crook of your thumb and on the tip of your fourth finger. Step 2. Hold the other chopstick with your thumb, index finger, and the middle finger, like you hold a pen. Step 3. Move only the top chopstick to meet the other one and pick up something. You don't hold them like this. This is called. Nigiribashi. This is another bad way of holding them, which is called. Battenbashi. Now you can hold chopsticks properly, but it's not enough. There are other bad manners you might want to avoid. The first one is. Yosebashi. Which is pulling a plate towards yourself with your chopsticks, as Taichi did in the video. The next one is. Awasebashi. Which is when you touch your chopsticks to another person's chopsticks to pass and receive food. These acts are mainly performed at funerals when people pick up the remains after a body has been cremated. Because of this, people think it is unacceptable behavior for a dinner table. Another unacceptable behavior is. Tatebashi. Which is sticking chopsticks straight up in a rice bowl. In Japan, people do this only to the food set out for the departed at a funeral, so you should avoid doing this at a meal. Imagine you're staying in your Japanese friend's house and you're invited to take a bath. What do you do? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Anyone can learn how to take a Japanese style bath. In this lesson, you learn how. Ben and Taichi are relaxing in the living room after the dinner. Let's watch! Ben, 
お風呂どうぞはいありがとうございます第一ベン君をお風呂場に案内してわかった最初にここでシャワーを浴びてそれから湯船に入ってわかった Now the lesson focus Here's how to take a Japanese style bath. Japanese houses usually have a separate bathroom and toilet room. The bathroom is called Furoba, and the toilet is called Toide. The Japanese bathroom consists of a washing area, Araiba, and a bathtub. Yubune. You're supposed to wash your body and shampoo your hair in the washing area. The bathtub is filled up with hot water for you to soak and relax. Usually, the hot water in a bathtub is not replaced every time a person takes a bath, and each family member uses the same water. You can imagine that it's important to keep the bath water clean. That's why it's so important to rinse your body first. When you're washing in the washing area, be careful not to splash soap into the bathtub. For many Japanese people, the purpose of taking a bath is to relax. Also, raising your body temperature is considered good for your health. So, get in the mindset of relaxation and learn to appreciate the Japanese style of taking a bath. Imagine you just started working at a Japanese company. How should you greet your co workers? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Japanese business greetings are easy to master. In this lesson, you learn how. Mark just arrived at his office. Let's watch. お先に失礼しますお疲れ様でした佐野課長お先に失礼しますお疲れ様 Now the lesson focus Here's how to greet your co-workers In Japanese companies there is a seniority system based on how long you've worked there You might hear the words 先輩 Seniors and Kohai Juniors. For example, if you've been working for a company for two years, any co worker who has been working there for over two years would be your senior. Senpai. And anyone who has been working there fewer than two years is your junior. Kohai. Even if their titles and positions are the same, Senpai. Are usually supposed to teach or guide. Kohai. You need to speak politely to your. Senpai. And you can speak casually to your. Kohai. Do you remember when Mark and his boss met by the elevator? Mark greeted his boss politely and said, His boss responded casually and said, This might be obvious because Mark is subordinate to his boss. But when Mark meets anybody whose career at the company is longer than his, the same thing would happen. Mark would politely greet his senpai, and that person would respond to Mark casually. Let's take a look at the next phrase. The general meaning is, I'm sorry for leaving before you. Can you understand why Japanese people use an apologetic expression when they leave earlier than other workers? In traditional Japanese corporate culture, Working overtime is very common. It's also considered bad form to leave the office while your co workers are still working. That's why the expression is used when you leave the office as an implied apology for leaving earlier than the people still there. The tendency to overwork is still a large part of Japanese culture, but it should be noted that younger generations are less and less likely to do so. Imagine you're at the ramen place in Japan. But before you can sit down, you're asked to use a big machine. What do you do? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Ordering food at restaurants is easy once you know the trick. In this lesson, you learn it. Mark is having lunch at the ramen restaurant. Let's watch. Irashaimase. Shio ramen. Omori. 味玉お釣りいらっしゃいませ食券お願いしますはい塩ラーメン大盛り
トッピングは味玉ですね Now, the lesson focus. Here's how to order food at the ramen restaurant. In Japan, some ramen shops use a meal ticket vending machine. Kenbai ki. You need to buy meal tickets. Shokken. At the vending machine before getting seated. Because of this, you need to decide what to eat quickly. So, in this lesson, you'll learn how to order from these machines. There are many different kinds of ramen with different broths and toppings. The most basic types are salt, shio, miso paste, miso, soy sauce, shoyu, and pork bone broth. Tonkotsu. Usually, a ramen shop will have a few types available for you to choose from. If the ramen shop has a specialty, you should be sure to try that out. For example, if you go to Sapporo in Hokkaido, You should try. Miso ramen. If you go to Hakata in Kyushu, you should try. Tonkotsu. Also, they have various toppings available which you can add. Popular toppings are seasoned egg, ajitama, barbecued pork, chashu, bean sprouts, moyashi, bamboo shoots, menma, seasoned eggs, or ajitama. Are the most popular topping. They're made by soaking boiled eggs in a specially made soup stock. In many ramen shops, you can order a large portion. Omori. Many ramen places have other options too, such as. Namimori. Or. Chumori. Which is regular or medium. You might see both listed in some places, in which case. Chumori. Should be slightly bigger. Once you buy tickets for your ramen, toppings, and size, You then press a button marked Otsuri, meaning change. Pressing that button means you've finished your order and your change will come out. Here's a tip ramen prices are relatively low, and many machines do not accept 5,000 or 10,000 yen notes. Make sure to have 1,000 yen notes and coins ready. Once you get the tickets, take a seat and hand the tickets to a shop clerk. Then just wait for your ramen to come. You've just been served a bowl of ramen, but what is the correct way to eat it? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. There are a few things you need to be careful when eating ramen in Japan. In this lesson, you learn what they are. Mark is waiting for his order during his lunch break. Let's watch! Omatase shimashita! Sumimasen. これは何ですかこれはレンゲです。これでスープを飲んでください。ああ、わかりました。それから、七味唐辛子もらえますかはい、わかりました。はい、どうぞ。ありがとうございます。おいしい Now, the lesson focus. Here's how to eat ramen. The most important thing to know about eating ramen is that you are supposed to slurp noodles when you eat ramen. It's not bad manners at all. In fact, it's good. Some people say noodles taste better when you slurp them because that way you can taste the noodles and soup at the same time. Do you remember the name for the spoon hooked on the edge of a ramen bowl? Renge. It's a Chinese spoon. This was originally a ceramic spoon for Chinese food. You can often find it with ramen. Sometimes it's made out of plastic. As the shop worker told Mark, it's used for eating the ramen broth. Don't use it to eat the noodles. When you take a seat at a ramen shop, you might find some condiments on the table. The usual condiments are. Hichimi togarashi. Seven flavor chili pepper, ラー油 chili oil, おろしにんにく grated garlic, and こしょう pepper. There are no strict rules about which condiment you should use for each type of ramen, but generally it's said that きちみとうがらし seven flavor chili pepper goes well with みそラーメン ramen with miso. ラー油 Chili oil goes well with. Tonkotsu ramen. 
Ramen with pork bone broth. Oroshi ninniku. Grated garlic. Goes well with. Tonkotsu. And miso ramen. Ramen with pork bone broth and ramen with miso. Kosho. Pepper. Goes well with any type of ramen. But it's up to you. So try out different combinations and figure out what you like the most. You've been invited to a drinking party at your office. What should you know before you go? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Lisa here. Drinking parties are a big part of Japanese company culture. In this lesson, you learn what to do. Mark has been invited to a company drinking party after work. Let's watch. Mark no kangei kai o hajimemasu. Mina san, biru arimasu ka? Dozo. Ah, domo. Now the lesson focus. Here's how to act at the company drinking party. A Japanese company usually organizes many parties for co workers to go out and celebrate special events, including a year end party. Bonenkai. New Year's parties. Shinnenkai. Welcome parties. Kangeikai. And farewell parties. Sobetsukai. Other than these official parties, workers often get together and go out to drink after work. These are called. Nomikai. Drinking parties. Japanese parties usually start with. Kanpai. You are not supposed to start drinking or eating before this toast. Sometimes, before the toast, an executive or director in the company may give a speech. The speech may last a long time, but everyone waits until the toast to start drinking. After the toast, you may drink, eat, and talk. In the middle of the party, there might be more toasts. Do you know how to toast those senior to you? Showing respect to your seniors is an important virtue in Japan. So, when toasting with seniors, bow and clink your glass at a slightly lower angle than theirs. What should you do when you've finished your first glass of beer? You're not supposed to pour beer for yourself. In Japan, Pouring one's own drink is called. Tejaku. And this practice is considered bad manners. Pouring drinks for others at the table is the common and respectful practice. When you spot an empty glass, try to refill it. Your co worker will do the same for you. As mentioned, the company drinking parties. Nomikai. Usually start with. Kanpai. There is also a closing moment which is called. Shime. At the closing moment, there may be a closing speech and a special ritual called. Tejime. This is how to do. Ipponjime. Which is the most popular style. The party organizer calls out. Ote o haishaku. This literally means, let me borrow your hands. It's the signal to raise your hands and get ready. Then everyone says loudly. Yo! And claps their hands like this. So. You clap your hands ten times in total. Then, when the organizer says, everyone starts applauding and the party is finished. There are two more closing styles as well. Sometimes you'll see, Sanbonjime and Ichojime or Kanto Ipponjime. For Sanbonjime, you repeat the Ipponjime three times. So you need to clap your hands thirty times in total. On the other hand, Ichojime or Kanto Ipponjime is a simplified version. So when the organizer calls out, Ote o haishaku, everyone says, Yo! and claps only once. This style is commonly used in Tokyo and its neighboring prefectures. You're going to a restaurant with your boss. Did you know that it's considered rude to take a certain seat? Konnichiwa, Lisa desu. Listen here. The rules for seating position in Japan are easy to learn once you know they exist. In this lesson, you learn about them. Mark and his boss are arriving at the restaurant where they will meet up with clients. Let's watch. Irashaimase. Takato desu. 12時に 4名で予約しました. 
お待ちしておりましたこちらへどうぞこちらでございます靴はここで脱ぎますかはいお願いしますではございます。The most important thing to know is to take off your shoes when you enter the Zashiki. Once you've entered the Zashiki, how do you know where to sit at the table? It all depends on your relative seniority. If you are the most senior person, you will take the seat of honor. Kamiza. The seat of honor is located in front of an alcove called the Tokonoma with a vase of flowers and a drawing or painting on the wall. If you are the most junior person, You will take the lowest seat, Shimoza, which is located nearest to the entrance. That area is normally busy with restaurant staff and not very quiet. That's why the most junior person or the party organizer takes the Shimoza so that he or she can take care of food and drink orders or other errands. If it's a room for four people, each seat is ranked like this. In the scene, Mr. Sano took the seat across from the Kamiza. Which is seat number three. Because they will be meeting their clients, the superior of the clients is supposed to take the seat of honor, seat number one. As the company's counterpart, Mr. Sano is supposed to take seat number three. Then the junior of the clients will take seat number two. And Mark took the Shimoza, which is seat number four, because he is the most junior person in this group. The Kamiza and Shimoza. Can be seen in other situations, such as in a taxi or in an elevator. In a taxi, Kamiza is the seat behind the driver's seat, and Shimoza is the passenger seat. In an elevator, Shimoza is in front of the operation panel, so the most junior person is supposed to take care of pressing the buttons. Then the Kamiza is behind the Shimoza. Like this quick lesson? Watch the full version at JapanesePort101.com to understand the whole dialogue. While you're there, learn all about Japanese culture with our audio lessons and cultural word lists. Sign up for your free lifetime account at JapanesePort101.com. Jamatane!